Oh, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to uh, the Speared Sundays podcast episode, Who Cares? I'm your host, Lewis Spears, and I look cute today. I'm going to be real with you. I look very cute today. Uh, I'm wearing, a, for the audio listeners, fucking switch over to video right now because you're missing out on, on an experience right here. I look fucking cute. It's very rare that I look cute, but I'm going to say it right now. Uh, that's how I'm looking. Okay. And I, and I really do think, right, I'm wearing a full Nike tracksuit pants included your boys matching i've even got the fucking shoes and my cute little socks i'm cute today okay you need to understand that because it's really going to color what el- what is said throughout the, the next you know hour hour and a half if you're, if you're a patreon supporter because you guys get extra because i fucking love you all right but I look cute today, and I think it's it's time for all of us to admit it. So write a comment, just let let the world know that I look cute, because it's it's just it's just the truth at this point. All right, uh, I I look cute, and I think that it's, that's pretty rare for me. Normally, I look like I'm about to shoot up a school or stab you at a train station, and I think that. I've managed to do something that's in, that's that's very difficult to do, and that's look quite cute in a matching tracksuit. Normally, you you either look like a Darrow or a menacing in a matching tracksuit. And I looked at myself in the mirror, and I thought, I look cute today. Why do I look cute? I'm wearing a matching tracksuit. You, usually, when you see a matching tracksuit person, especially when they live in Frankston, they're about to take your shoes. Uh, and I think it all comes down to the hat. It's the little beanie that really does it. The beanie in the hair that really maximizes the cute look uh, that I'm rolling with today. I, I, I really do feel, I tested it out in the mirror, actually. I, uh, I, I switched this hat out for a, a Nike TN cap, and uh, I pissed my own pants. I look so scary in the mirror. I, I, I immediately just pulled my wallet out of my pockets and threw it into a bush and ran. I'm like, I'll get that. I'll come back and get that later. Great little street smart tip. If you ever get fucking mugged uh, in the street, uh, if you're far enough to run away, don't give them your wallet or your phone. Pull both of those things out of your pockets, chuck them in a bush and run. Worst case scenario, they've got your shit anyway. Best case scenario, do a little lap of the block, come back, pick it up, you're good. Little street smart tip there for any of you who get mugged at knife point. Uh, is, is, and, and that's the type of shit that you get from a guy wearing a matching tracksuit. It's just weird, out of nowhere, kind of good, street smart tips, you know? Like I remember when I was 15, went to the beach with a bunch of high school friends, and for some reason there was a guy that was 21 wearing a matching tracksuit hanging out with the 15-year-olds. I can only assume he was there to take advantage of the girls. Uh, but on the way there, he did give us a lot of unnecessary street smart tips. For example, see those boys that are riding in between the car- carriages don't talk to them. They're from this gang. Treat them with respect. And that's, you know, some good tips. The man was a pedophile, most likely, but he gave me a couple of tips that that really, you know, set me on my way uh, to and benefited me for the rest of my life. Uh, and I would like to say uh, thank you, but also death penalty to that man uh, because, he, because, you know, I, it's very conflicting because some of the tips that he gave me on that train ride have kept me safe throughout my life, but also I'm pretty sure he liked to fuck kids. So, it, you know, so that really does prove that there's a little bit of good in everyone, you know? There's a little bit, it's a yin and yang, you know? Some people, you know, a, a guy, you know, wearing a matching tracksuit, maybe he robs servo stations, but also maybe he helps out at the at the local youth centre. Everyone has a bit of yin and yang to them. I, I'm like this. I, I feel like I provide a lot of value to the world. I make a lot of people laugh. But also, I think that a lot of the things I post make a lot of people cry. And it's, it's the yin and yang. It's And we need to embrace it. Uh, and, and, and what I'm really trying to say is today, guys, I look cute. Now, uh, what I also want to do is just plug in my fucking laptop, uh, which has actually become a running theme through every fucking episode I've done. I, I always think, man, I cannot let that happen next episode. And then it has the next fucking episode. Why can't I get it in the hole? That is what he said. Um, but I'm happy to be here, guys. I'm. It's a beautiful Sunday. It is Valentine's Day. Uh, whether you're, whether you're with a loved one, 
or masturbating alone after having a cry or before a cry. You know, we've all been there where you have a wank and then and then for some reason about half an hour later you have a bit of a cry. That's fine. Or what's more common is you have a bit of a cry, you feel a lot better and you're like, you know what, I might just top this night off with a wank and go to sleep, call it a day. We've all been there. It happens. And whichever, whichever side of the fence, whether you're crying pre or post wank, happy Valentine's Day. And if you're having a Valentine's Day with a loved one, uh, what's it like leaving your house i wouldn't know because i live in fucking melbourne and it's all closed again dictator dan andrews has locked us in outdoors as he should by the way i think a lot of people have been confused about my posting i hate lockdown it fucking sucks but also you know what i you know what i hate uh more than a lockdown not seeing grandma at christmas because she's fucking buried in a hole dead Right? I, I understand it sucks. It's terrible. I hate wearing masks. I hate staying at home. But also, you know what else I don't want to be? The fuck the fucking UK, America. Let's let's lock it down for five days, come out, and then let me do my shows. Dear God, the amount of fucking anxiety I've had for the last three days thinking about am I gonna have to refund everyone? Am I gonna get to do my shows? Is it even gonna be safe to do my shows? I've decided that tomorrow is the only day in the future. There is no day after tomorrow. There is no next week. There is no next month. 2022, I, who, who is she? Never heard of her. Fuck that bitch. All I know is what I'm doing today and tomorrow and what I did yesterday. That's it. You look too far in the future, you start freaking out. You look too far in the past, you start going, man, life used to be a bit better, didn't it? I can leave my fucking house. What you want to do is eliminate the future and the past. Think about tomorrow and yesterday, today only. Three days is all I'm allowed to think about. I'm like, what am I going to do tomorrow? I might go for a walk in the morning. Maybe I'll fucking make myself a nice breakfast. If I go, what am I going to do next month when my shows are on? My brain goes, maybe you'll have to give everyone's money back and you'll never do stand up again. Fuck. So I don't think about that and I highly encourage it. I mean, it works in China, you know. Doesn't it? You go to China, everyone's, everyone goes, what are you doing next week? And they go, next week? I, I don't know what I'm doing next week. Whatever they let me do. I'm thinking about tomorrow. I know that I can fucking eat bat soup tomorrow, so I'm going to do that tomorrow. I don't know about this next week business. The rules change all the time. Who cares? You need to eliminate next week. It doesn't exist. Next month, never heard of it. Next year, good luck. Because that's what I did. I fucked up before covid before 2019, which I can barely remember because it was a lot longer than yesterday, before 2019, I had the next three years planned out. Dickhead alert. Now I'm much happier only thinking about tomorrow. Tomorrow, I know that I can go for a walk for two hours and I can go to the supermarket. Beyond that, who cares? What am I, what am I going to do the day after that? I don't know. If I start thinking about, apparently this lockdown ends on fucking Thursday. If I start thinking about what I'm going to do on Thursday, my brain starts to implode. Are they even going to let us out? Will it be safe to do so will dictator dan let us extend the lockdown or will he end it early who gives a fuck i only think about tomorrow and yesterday and today and i encourage you do the same everyone who's living in brisbane you guys can think about next week but not here highly recommended it's great uh, fucking people ask me oh what are you doing what are you doing for your brother's birthday in february man i don't know he might where might be all be fucking dead then the, 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 there might be a new strain the russian strain where it's uh, it's it's much more uh, it's much more communist than the other streams, much more socialized. It's it's more spreadable. It gives it to everyone. A little bit of virus for everyone, from each according to his lungs to each according to their vulnerability to the, to the virus. Maybe that's the new virus strain that's going to come out. I don't know. All I know is that tomorrow I'm going to go for a walk in the morning and feed the ducks. Because that's all I'm going to plan for is tomorrow, all right? I'll wake up, I'll feed the ducks, and then I'll fucking, maybe I'll, maybe I'll uh, wank and cry before or after I go to sleep. Who knows? It's only thinking about tomorrow. That's really how you need to go ahead today and, and, and going ahead for the next week. Whether or not that week happens, I don't know. I'm not thinking about it. I'm only thinking about Monday. Guys, um... Despite me being incredibly pessimistic, I feel very good. Uh, that, that all was a joke. I, I do. I feel good about this. I think, right, as the, uh, the, the, what am, what, what am I, the fucking, um, the, the quarantine clairvoyant, the COVID clairvoyant, right? Everyone's been coming to me. What do you think's going to happen? My DMs are full because I called a lot of this shit. Not all of it, but a lot of it. I was like, this is going to happen. And then it happened. I think. I'm not 100% on this, but I think this one's going to get extended a little bit. 
I think I'm going to get to do my shows. I really believe that. Um, I don't... Uh, I, I think that maybe capacities will be reduced even further, so get your tickets, I guess. I think I have fucking uh, five left to the first Saturday. Can we sell that out, please? I understand... The climate makes you go, oh, I don't know if it's going to happen, but I, I haven't spent anyone's fucking money. It'll get refunded or transferred or rescheduled. We'll work something out. But can you please fucking buy it so I stop freaking out? No, I'm actually selling really well. I'm selling the best that I have uh, out of any time I've done the festival, which is amazing, and I'm very, very grateful, and thank you very much. Um, but I think I think this one will get extended a little bit. I do think that. We haven't had a zero-case day uh, since it started, uh, I think it'll get extended just a little bit. Not heaps, a little bit. Um, I don't think we're going to go to this massive fucking huge lockdown, but I think it's going to get, ex they're going to tack a couple extra days on there to be safe. And maybe that's the right thing to do. I don't know. I just think that, uh, I think we can all agree, right? And I've said this before, but I'm saying it again. Why the fuck are we running quarantines from hotels using hotel staff. I've been to a lot of hotels. You ever talk to someone who works at a hotel? They're a fucking doorknob. They work at a hotel. They can't even get your order right. These cunts can't even do a wake up call. You want to you want to get them to protect the economy? You ever talk to someone who works in a hotel? They're a shell of a human. They're more empty than the fucking empty room that doesn't have a family in it. They you know what someone you know what you can trust a hotel worker to do? Clean up my cum. And that's it. That's all you can trust a hotel worker to do is clean up cum. And they do a good job. I'm not saying that hotel workers are bad people and they're unnecessary. They're very necessary. Do you want cum in your hotel? No. Someone's going to clean it up, all right? I trust hotel workers to do three things. Clean up my cum, ban me from their hotel service for leaving a mess, and not waking me up when I ask you to. Those are the only three things you can trust a hotel worker to do. And only two of those things, well, only one of those things is done properly, and that's cleaning up cum. All right? Why the fuck are we trusting the economy, people's lives, the fucking pandemic to cunts who up until now have had no experience with anything biological other than cum. And even then, if if handling cum is your criteria for hiring a hotel quarantine person, you got to go with prostitutes because they've handled a lot more, all right? These fucking hotel workers, they have other jobs. Why are we considering that? I'm not trashing people that work in hospitality, but I think we'll all agree, if you work in a cafe or a hotel, you don't know how to run a quarantine, and that's not your fault. That is the fucking government's fault. It's not even Victoria's fault. It's fucking... It's, it's, I'm, I don't want to get too friendly Geordies on you guys, but it's the liberal government not wanting to do fucking anything so that they can blame any faults on the individual premiers in the city. The cunt who runs Perth, Mark McGowan, looks like he'd king hit you if you looked at him, his missus wrong. He said it best. Quarantine is the job of the federal governments, not the individual states. It's in the fucking constitution or whatever the fuck he referenced. I saw a TikTok on it, all right? This is a comedy podcast. You want to fact check me? Go fuck yourself. I don't even fact check me, all right? But he said that quarantine is the federal government's job. So if the federal government starts criticizing how individual premiers or states handle quarantine, they they are having fuck-ups because they don't have the powers that the federal government has. Obviously, they can't bring in the fucking military. The federal government can deploy the military. They did it in New Zealand. They had one quarantine fuck-up. They deployed the military. It hasn't happened again. Why can't we do that? Why the fuck are we holding quarantines in the middle of populated areas? Send them to Christmas Island! Fuck! Swap places with the refugees for six months. We'll get this shit sorted in no time. I don't know why the fuck you would have people who have other jobs running your quarantine. No... No disrespect to anyone who works two jobs. If you have two jobs, you're a fucking hustler and you and go for it. But why the fuck do we have s people who can work two jobs also run in quarantine? This cunt worked at a fucking airport. He served 4,000 people. Not even his fault. He tested negative. Then he goes to his other job. He serves 4,000 cunts. 1,500 of them go to Sydney. The whole country could get it now because these fucking dumb cunts are running hotel quarantine. 
Minimum wage people are ensuring the future of our country and the economy and people's lives. What are we doing? Give them a hundred grand. It's cheaper. Think about how much fucking tax revenue these cunts would have lost from just five days of businesses shutting down. What are they doing? I don't know. It's making... It's, it's this shit is making me mad. I think this, this fucking staying in our homes, this lockdown shit, cool necessary but only because the federal government won't do their fucking job and do quarantine properly get these cunts the fuck out you come here internationally you do the time three weeks somewhere else whether you're staying in a if you stay you stay in your fucking room where what difference does it make if you're staying in a hotel in the middle of the city or on the fucking moon. You can't leave your room. So what is the benefit of doing it here other than having a lot of minimum wage available workers to run the shit poorly? That's it. Get the army to do it. It's better than sending them over to shell weddings in the Middle East because it looks like some cunt with a camera is carrying an AK-47 with, with a rocket launcher on it. It's a lens, bro. I don't know. We have the reserves. They're sitting there doing fucking push-ups. Use them. They're getting paid anyway. You don't have to pay them extra. For fuck's sake, bro. I don't, I don't know. I'm getting angry. Sorry. I don't meant to get preachy on this. It's just like my fucking mum has to close their business. I got to shut shit down. Fucking Keelan lives by himself. He went through that fucking hell of quarantining by himself. I feel so sorry for all these people who have to do it. He left to Canberra. Good on him. Instead of fucking staying at home, it makes it makes the fucking suicide rates go up. It kills businesses. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't do it, but I am saying we didn't, we shouldn't have had to do it because this quarantine has been run terribly. And that is not fucking dictator Dan's fault because he's been out. He's got, he's used his powers to the maximum that he's able to. It's the fucking federal government not doing their job properly. I don't know. Because they would rather fucking open everything up. And that fat cunt ScoMo would rather just sit there and do photo ops in his underwear, brushing his teeth and then go on a holiday than do anything. Can that cunt sh fuck off? And this isn't even like a, oh, he's a liberal. I just hate him. Does anyone else just hate the cunt? Like, wh like what, does, what has he actually done? Has he unified us? Has he brought us together? Has he done anything? Has he, has he even brought in any policies? I'm not even talking, like, has he done anything? Sure, the liberals have done a bunch of stuff. They've done a lot of things that are good. They've done a lot of things that are bad. But has he done anything? That's what I'm saying. Has he literally just him? Has, has there been any, been any ideas that were his idea that he executed on? Or did he just fucking do a photo op in his underwear, brushing his teeth, build a chicken coop, and then go on 16,000 holidays? Has he done anything? Oh, everyone deserves a holiday. Did, okay, one. You get one. I took one holiday. Do you need six? Also, you have a term for four years, maybe. Four years, maybe eight years. You don't get a holiday. I'm sorry. You're running the country. That's the sacrifices you make. The CEO of fucking ANZ doesn't take six holidays. Why does the cunt who runs the country get 17,000 holidays? I don't see him unless he's doing posting photos that piss me off. Guys, I want to say, moving on from all... I'm going to move on from all of this. Buy tickets at loosebeers.com. Now, um, I am moving on from all of this stuff because I wanted to talk about something um, that, uh, that, that I think is very important if you're a listener of Spearhead Sundays. And if you are a regular listener, you will know uh, that this, is, this has been a longstanding rule um, and, and that, that rule is uh, feedback will be completely disregard, disregarded, 100% disregarded. And this, and this is, I'm not saying that I don't like you. I love you. I love, I love the people that support me. I've been very open. You guys have changed my life for the better, and I'm eternally grateful for it. But, I, but at the same time, uh, a lot of you piss me off. Uh, and it's it's only ever the it's, a, it's only ever the it's only a, it's a very very small minority, and it's the cunts who just really feel the need to leave feedback on a spearhead Sundays. Now, if you if you leave a comment on a video, f great. 
go for it. But if you fucking look at me now, sitting in a chair for an hour yelling, clearly unplanned, clearly literally, I si- I literally sit in my chair, turn on the camera, start recording and go. Half the time, I don't even upload the fucking show. I put in no effort into this and that's the appeal, all right? What do you want? You want me to fuck? You want regular segments? You want transitions? You want sound effects? Go listen to Luke and Lewis. This is me in a chair yelling, and that's all. And I'm and if you like it, great. I'm happy that you're here, and I love doing this show because it sucks. And that's the appeal. There's there's a million other podcasts that are well produced, done properly, research. I just yelled for 15 minutes about a problem I assume is because the federal government is causing it. I didn't research it. I saw two tweets and a TikTok and took it into my brain as fact. If you fucking you I bet there's already comments that have been written fucking disputing me. I want you to know you're probably right. I didn't research anything, but that's the show. I'll research what I say on my main channel. I'll research what I say on Luke and Lewis. Here, I will just say things. And that's the appeal. It's me yelling and no fact checking or planning. So when I get comments like this, I get a little bit heated because these cunts don't understand the show, all right? Let's let's pull this up. On the Spearhead Sunday's Instagram, which you can follow, we post all the best clips and some banger fucking memes. <clears throat> this one from George with no display picture because, of course, because if George had a photo of his face, he would get banned for posting uh, gore, even though that's just what he looks like normally. The first bit... Bad look, not even funny, went on for too long. Two, spelled incorrectly. So George is a moron, okay? Because every single bit on this show goes for too long. Did you not just, did you forget about the 15 minutes I spent screaming about hotel quarantine? I would say that went on for too long. But that's the show. And that's why we're here, George. We're all enjoying it. Get the fuck out of the way. I responded to this, never listen to the show ever again. Not again, ever again. Just that little bit extra letting you know, never listen to the show ever again, right? And I just wanted to, I wanted to really restate the fact about this podcast, and that is that this place is a no feedback zone. It's a no feedback zone. Positive, negative, negative. What's the fucking word for in between? Don't tell me because this is a no feedback zone. Indifferent. Positive, negative, indifferent. It's a no feedback zone. All right. Now, I'm not saying that you shouldn't comment. I read your comments. You can have your input. You can tell me that I'm wrong. But if you want to tell me how to do the show or give constructive criticism on what is said comedically, never listen to the show ever again. Because this is a no feedback zone. And I think that we can, we've can. we all been on board this for a long time. This is the show and it uh, it's not changing. It's been this since I started. Episode one of this show was me yelling into a USB mic, no video about being broke and how much that sucked and how angry it made me. And the show hasn't progressed. It looks better. Sure, it looks better. It's filmed now. It probably sounds better. I look cute. That's true. All of these things are true, and you can comment on that, but that's not the show. The show is me yelling for too long, going on tangents, and never finishing what I started saying. Last episode, I think I spent 30 minutes teasing a thing that I wanted to say, and then I got distracted yelling about other stuff. I never finished what I was going to say, and now, today, because I can't think about what happened last week, because that's against my new personal ethos, I can only think about yesterday and tomorrow, I can't even remember what I was supposed to say, and that's the show. And it's a no feedback zone. And I'm grateful that you're here, and I appreciate your support. And if you support me on Patreon, you are a king. 
or a queen or or, or a non-binary leader, whatever the fuck you want to call yourself, I love you, but this is a no feedback zone. And that's just how it's been for years, for 200 episodes. It's been a no feedback zone. So if you want to leave a comment, you can, but it won't be taken on board. That's all I'm saying. What is this, a fucking lifeboat? No, we're not taking anything on board here. This is Spearhead Sundays. You get what you get and you don't get upset because that's what I do because that's the show. It's a no feedback zone. Okay? I think we can all agree with that. Uh, and now, speaking of uh, of how much better this must look and trashing feedback, uh, I uh, I got this other comment uh, um, from uh, from Advent Avenger. Obviously, and, and they're... they're display picture is some kind of uh looks like a rune probably from a video game it's red and black and their name is advent avenger so they're obviously an incel for sure they've never fucked because they left this comment i have a really crisp display it seems so if you're sitting at home and you have a really good monitor and it's not for a business me reason you you might be an incel it's not a hundred percent for certain, but if you have like a 4K monitor in your house and you're not like a designer, an editor, or uh, insanely rich, you you may have never fucked. I'm not, it's not definite, but there's probably a fair percentage of you with 4K monitors who haven't fucked in the last 18 months. And you can comment below. I would love to know if I'm if I'm nailing it there because that is a big assumption, but I'm I'm really vibing with that one. I really do think if you have a 4K monitor and it's not for your job, you probably haven't fucked in about 18 months. And I'm talking pre-pandemic too. Like there's nothing to do with quarantine. You're not getting any pussy. And and you know, you know that's fine. I'm sure the anime looks great. I'm sure the anime looks great on your fucking monitor. You know, Crunchyroll probably looks great loading loading up in that in 4K. But you know what looks better than than Crunchyroll? Wet pussy. And and I you probably can't relate to that. But you know, if you load up a certain couple of videos on Pornhub, the videos are getting higher resolution. Maybe you could get an inkling of what I'm saying. Not of true experience. You won't fully get on board, but you may understand where I'm coming from that I think pussy might be better than a 4K monitor. But but again, that's just my opinion. Uh, Advent Adventure. Uh, I have a really crisp display, it seems. <clears throat> I up, So last week's episode was uploaded in 4K, which I've started to do because I thought, you know what? I would love to just make the, the podcast look that little bit better. It takes much longer for me to upload. It takes much longer for me to edit. It's a lot more effort, but I thought, I think it's worth it um, because I think 4K is appreciated. And this is uh, one of the only comments that I got about 4K resolution. I have a really crisp display, it seems. Now, when 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 I when I when I read this out, I want you to think about how many more hours it took me to upload something in 4K that's an hour long. The extra effort that I went through, not just recording, but also editing, transcoding, exporting, and uploading. Okay. So I would say maybe an extra six hours. Uh, it took me to, to do that, not sitting there, but, you know, processing, uploading. I had to leave it there for six hours, thinking about it for that long, making sure that it went right. So that's the level of effort that I went to, through to make something better for this guy who then wrote this. I have a really crisp display, it seems. Try to dress yourself properly or at least wash the stuff you wear before you go on air. Keep in mind, I'm wearing a T-shirt. Dress myself properly for what, Advent Avenger? I'm sitting in a chair yelling about my nose for 40 minutes. How do I dress appropriately for that? You want me to put on a fucking tuxedo that is steam pressed and I and I roll it to get all the cat hair off it? I'm Fuck you, Advent Avenger. How about that? You probably look so terrible because you've got cum all over your 4K screen because you've been looking at hentai for too long. You've never seen a pussy. Try to dress yourself properly or at least wash the things you wear before you go on air. On air. I'm sorry. Is this a radio station? You are covered in hair and white stuff. Yeah, that's the cum on your screen, dude. And that shirt looks like it went through the Australian Independence War, if that's even a thing. Also, your nose is fine. 
typical American. Sounding off with some shit no one cares about. Just yelling, just making noise. If there's one thing about an, an American that really fucking makes you different from an Australian, an English person, or any other country, it's this. Yap, 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 noise. Making noise. I love my American fans. Unfortunately, you now make up the majority of my audience because your population is so large in amount of people and BMI. But if there's one, I can immediately tell when I read a comment whether it was made by an Australian or an American. And it's because yap, yap, yap. That's the difference. Just saying shit to be heard. Oh, I'm sorry. My T-shirt wasn't steamed impressed enough for your 4k display is that really your issue or did you have to tell everyone that you had a 4k display this is a no feedback zone and for you advent adventure i just wanted you to know that you are the reason that from this point of the episode the rest of the episode is gonna be in 360p for the rest of the episode your that's your fault i hope you enjoy it you know what? Fuck you, bro. Now it's in 144. And that's your fault. How do I look, bro? Crisp enough for you? Enjoy the rest of the podcast because now it's in Minecraft. And that's your fault. And that's the consequences of leaving feedback on Spearhead Sundays, which we all know, as previously stated, is say it with me, a no feedback zone. All right? And that's the show. And now it's time to talk about uh, about our sponsor, Manscaped. Manscaped.com. What the fuck is my code? The code is SPEARS. Use code SPEARS for 20% off and free shipping your Manscaped. It shaves your pubes really well. I use it all the time uh, and use it. I didn't sneeze there, but I'm leaving it in. Um, fellas, how's your beach bod treating you? Manscaped TM is here. Why would they put the TM in the ad read? Like, why? Do, like, what? Do, does that need to be? Just fucking write Manscaped. Do, that's one thing that shits me about all brands is the TM thing. Sure, put it in your logo, but does it have to be in the ad read thing? Because I will say it. Um, Manscaped TM is here to ensure your post-quarantine body. Oh, that didn't age well, did it? I guess, uh, you know, we'll come out of quarantine in the, in the next fucking six years. Uh, to ensure your post-quarantine body is ready for the wild. Don't be that guy at the beach with a bear rug on your chest. And if you grew some quarantine man tits, the least you can do is make sure they're hairless. Bit of body, sh- body shaming from Manscaped there, but that's okay, you know, because I, I can't, I'm kind of vibing with it. Do not read. Host to talk about a funny grooming story. I'm out. I'm out, Manscaped. As stated last podcast, I have none. I have no more. I've told them all. They're not funny anymore. I think I told two of them three times in a row, and that's all I have. Um, Manscaped is dedicated to helping you level up your full body grooming game. That's right. Shave your fucking nose. They they, They hate hair. It's the... Manscaped is really out here in stating that the, the, the hair... Holocaust, and, and and I hesitated saying that a little bit because I thought I thought maybe they won't like it. So that's why you have to use the code, or I'll get in trouble, and and Manscaped goes away forever. Use code Spears for twenty percent off and free shipping. Uh, this is the best trimmer. The Lawnmower three point is the best trimmer on the market for those of you in need of a chest shave. I use it on my chest. That shit works. Their third generation trimmer features so that it's got no accent. Their parents are still a little bit, a little bit problematic, but but this one is third gen. It's you know properly integrated into the culture. It's very progressive. Speaks perfect English and is going to out earn everyone who lives in that country because they have the immigrant work ethic. Manscaped 3.0 third generation trimmer features a cutting edge ceramic blade to reduce grooming accidents. You ever try and kill yourself with a pot? It can't happen. Similar with this. Um, Thanks to the advanced skin safe TM technology pioneered by Manscaped TM. All right, use my code, would you? Manscaped.com, use code SPEARS, 20% off, free shipping. They're fucking good. You know what blew my mind? 
the other day. I found out in my Discord, some guy was talking, which you can join if you check out my Patreon and you get extra secret episodes of the Spearhead Sunday's podcast where I say fuck shit that I wouldn't even say here. And I say a lot of things here. Next episode I'll be will be done in blackface. <clears throat> it won't. Although they are, you know, if you're an audio listener, you might be sitting there thinking, oh, maybe, you know, it could be. Um, I found out from this uh, guy in my Patreon Discord, he has this app that just removes all silence, all pauses from podcasts. I Keelan listens to shit on two times speed. I hate that. I, I, I listen to shit on two times speed and it feels like I'm having a panic attack. It's terrible. I'm getting assaulted with information. I can't handle it. We watch fucking Philip DeFranco every day to get informed. That's how, That's why I'm such an idiot. And that man speaks so fast that it sh- that I kind of want to watch it on a little bit slower speed. Keelan turns that shit on two times speed. I wanted to put my fist through the, through the laptop, not even my laptop. Uh, so that annoys me. And I found out that some people do that with this podcast. And that was crazy. I feel like me yelling... At two times speed, I talk pretty fast anyway. Me yelling at two times speed, I feel like must give some people an aneurysm. I hate that. But then I found out that through my Discord, some people, some insane cunts put their podcast episodes through something that removes all silence and pauses and then listen to that on two times speed. So all of those little pauses that you just heard are removed. So to all of the people who are using those silence things, I just wanted to say this. Fuck you. And to everyone who wasn't using those things, that would be comedically silent. But for everyone else who has those silence removing things, that would have just sounded like fuck you. And you missed out on the comedic pauses. So delete that app. Don't run my shit through it. I like my pauses. Although you would skip a lot of me fucking plugging in my laptop, I assume. Um, right. Now, what did I want to talk about here? I've got my notes. Um, yeah, I think that what I would like to do in this 144p edition of Spearhead Sundays is, is really just talk about something I feel very passionate about, even more passionate about not taking on board feedback. Uh, and by the way, that's a terrible way to live your life, if you were wondering, all right? My podcast is a no-feedback zone, but don't, like, adopt that as a, as a general philosophy, okay? You do need feedback. Feedback is important. What me saying that this is a no-feedback zone is me saying that uh, th- this is never going to get better than it is. You know what I mean? Like, like I put effort into many different places. Every year I reckon I get twice as good at, at, at being a stand-up comedian. I reckon my videos get so much better. Luke and Lewis get so much funnier. Uh, my, my bi-monthly bull gets better. My content production looks better. It sounds better. Uh, my Instagram, my TikTok game, it all gets better, and I put effort into making it better. Spearhead Sundays really peaked in, like, 2012, uh, or actually, when did it start? 2014 or something? Whenever it started, around episode 15, and that's kind of where it, the, the, the improvements stopped. And I'm, I'm actually very happy with that because you, that's, that's quite rare where you're going to listen to a guy in like 2015 and then turn it on in 2021 and, and just go, well, nothing's changed. Literally nothing about the show has changed. Uh, and I really like that. I really like that is the appeal is that it it improved it improved it improved it stopped and then 6 years went by. That's the show. And if you don't like it that's that's cool. I get it. But fuck off forever never listen to the show ever again is what I'm also saying. But that is a terrible way to live your life. Like if you're fucking walking down the street and somebody goes, "Man, you look like shit." Take it on board, you know? I mean, if he's looking at you through a 4K monitor that he just got done watching hentai on, incel, disregard. But if he's in real life, maybe take, maybe you look like shit. Maybe you should dress up a little bit better. You know? Um, I wanted to. This is something I'm very passionate about, and something that I think we as a country could get on board with. And that is, uh, is, is defund Australia Post. Fuck it. 
Fuck Australia Post. Now, I do realise I just went anti-liberal for the first part of this, but now I'm getting on board with them. Defund Australia Post. Not because I think a private company could run it better. I'm talking literally defund them. Like, delete it. Defund them and don't let a private company buy it. They blew it. They suck. Fuck Australia Post. To death. Fuck them to death. Not in the way that you normally have sex, you know, dick, pussy. I mean, like, mouth fuck them to death. That's how much I want them gone. Defund them. Never use them. Use if I, I would rather deliver a letter by hand interstate than use Australia Post ever again after the shit I fucking went through. As you guys know, I'm sending out all the Alpha Energy merch. There has been a delay due to COVID. I apologize, but shit is going out. And even though I'm about to yell for a long time about Australia Post, your orders are on the way and they should be with you by the end of next week. Unless you're an international person... I don't know when it depends, all right? But they're going out this week. So, Australia Post. I'm a businessman. I have a business account with many suppliers. I have a business account with Fastway. Brilliant. I have a business account with Sendal. Amazing. Most of my packages within Australia are literally next day. If I, When I send it, it, it arrives at your house the next day. That's because most of my shit is through Fastway and Sendal. True kings. I want you to pay attention to your merch when it arrives. If you have a Fastway logo on it, oh. If you have a Sendal logo on it, oh. Incredible. You'll get that email and then you'll see it on your doorstep the next day or the day after that. Which is great because as we all agree, it's not worth looking a week in advance. Because that's when shit starts going wrong. You start looking at tomorrow, you'll be sweet. Only. All right? And that's where Sendal's great because I can, I can, you know, I'm only allowed to think about tomorrow so I know when shit's going to arrive to you. If shit starts taking more than one day, I don't know when it's going to get there. Because that's my new life philosophy. I can only think about tomorrow, today, and yesterday. Only. Right? If you get a Sendal or a Fastway logo on your package, mwah, delightful. Your package was treated with care. And I would say 80% of my packages are sent like that. But if you live in some regional fuck-off town, if you live in some shithole apartment, if you live in strange circumstances in Australia, your shit's getting sent with Australia Post. And I apologize. Because they are run by blind, dumb, deaf, angry oafs. Australia Post is the worst business of all time and I run a business. So what does that say about Australia Post if you're below me? The man who, when he immediately gets $1, puts $2 back in <laughs> and then goes, hang on a minute. Why do I have no money? Oh, that's right. I wanted to upload my podcast in 4K for no reason, apparently, because I just get criticized by the incel with a 4K display. But anyway, right? Australia Post is so terrible. Now, as you know, I'm an independent guy. I do all of my merch myself to ensure the quality and all that kind of bullshit, yada, 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 whatever. Give me your money, loosebeers.com. All my shit's done with me and my team. I do my own videos. I do my own touring. I do my own merch. Everything is 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 insulated in my little hand-picked team because that's the way shit gets done, right? But also... Uh, I, I have a team now. I, it used to literally be me doing every facet of the business, and that's when a lot of mistakes were made. Cunts are like, hey, why didn't you upload the podcast? Oh, I had to fulfill uh, the, the world's biggest stand-up comedy crowdfund by myself because I'm too stupid and arrogant. Not even arrogant, just like, yeah, that won't be hard. Just dumb. Dumb arrogance. Blind, dumb arrogance. I'm like, yeah, I can do the biggest crowdfund ever, make an incredible show uh, and do a five day a week radio show and also fulfill everyone's rewards by myself. Oh no, why have I lost seven kilos and haven't been sleeping for three months? Ah, because I might need some help. That's how I've run my business is uh, I work out that I need a hand when I am uh, about to pass out at like 3 p.m. On a, on a Tuesday, you know, like from just sleeplessness and uh, and malnutrition. That's what I'm like, oh, it looks like it's time to get another employee. Um, 
that, but that, but before I'd started deciding that shit, when I was broke, uh, I had a business account with Australia Post, and uh, Australia, look, this is how most business accounts run, just like your phone plan. You connect your card to the business, they take the money out automatically. Easy done. I use their thing, they take their money, no one has to worry about anything. Australia Post, you have to pay them manually. Now, if there's one thing about me, I can't even answer a text, let alone pay an invoice. I'll, if you're a person, like a guy that makes me some art or edits a video for me, you're getting paid on time, like that. If you're a corporation, back of the queue all the time, right? Get, you're going straight. You're, if you're a corporation and I owe you money, I'm treating you like African Americans in the 1940s. You're going to the back. Last priority. Stand at the back. I'm going to serve everybody else first. Right at the back, multi million dollar corporation. You do a terrible job. I will pay you late. That's how the world runs, right? So I did that. Oh, I don't know, a few too many times. And I got my business account banned by Australia Post because apparently I just forgot to pay uh, an invoice of $700 for 12 months. Now, some of you are obviously thinking right now, how can Australia Post do that to my boy Lewis? This is an injustice. I'm going to say right now, calm down. That's fair. I would say that if I owe you $700 for providing a service and I don't pay you for 18 months, you can ban me from your service and I'll go back to showing up at the post office and using those uh, red $8 uh, single price bags. Fair play. I, I get $700. You get to ban me. We're all even. Now, fast forward a few years later after the crowdfund, I'm now getting all of my shipping and fulfillment run by the beautiful Jasmine, my girl. She runs all of that. Customer service, everything. Cunts DM me on Instagram. I say, send an email to here. She does it. She's a princess. She's amazing. She does a great job and she pays people on time, which is something that I have not been doing since the, the inception of Lewis Spears Incorporated. Um, now, she realizes that there's a little weakness in my business, which is we need Australia Post to come and pick up the parcels because we keep dropping them off at the box and it's too much work. And the only reason we do that uh, is because I didn't pay my shit. Now, I had completely forgotten about this because I forgot about not paying them for 18 months. They banned me from the account. I didn't even really realize that I'd been banned. It stopped. It just stopped working and I couldn't be bothered troubleshooting it. I assumed it was a glitch and then I just did things the hard way instead of calling the customer service line, which I am prone to do. Oh, I have to give someone a call? No thanks. I'd rather just do it in a way that takes three hours longer for the rest of my life and then die. That's what I would rather do than call your shithole business. Open up a 24-7 chat or close your business, right? That's how I run my life. If you don't have a fucking chat that I can send a message to and then pretend to be a character and then say a bunch of dumb shit to amuse the person who's talking to 30 people at once, I don't want to work with your business. I got to call you? Cool. I'd rather just not use your services. You know that I put $1,000 into Dogecoin and then NAB flagged the Luke and Lewis joint account for fraud and now we can't log into the business account and that happened two weeks ago I have, and I, all I have to do is call them? Fuck that. I'd rather just not pay Ruben. You know what I mean? It's that type of vibe that we're rolling with. Open a chat line or close your business. So I did that with uh, Australia Post and... Um, that's whatever. I completely forget about this. Don't even realize that I've been banned from their services. A couple years go by. Jazz takes over the fulfillment part of the business. She starts doing shit. And then she goes, oh, it'd be a lot easier if Australia Post could just pick your shit up. And I was like, oh, yeah, you need a business account for that. I have one. Here's the login info. Uh, there's a problem with it, but I, couldn't, I never worked out why. So she calls them up. And then she finds out after about three or four days of phone calling with these incompetent fools. Yes, I'm calling the people I owe money incompetent. She finds out that uh, the reason they closed my business is because I owe them $700 and then they closed my account and forgave the debt, which is a big win for Lewis Spears Incorporated. That's like pocketing 700 bucks, right? And with no punishment other than 
you know, not being able to use their services. I call that a big win for me, okay? And a big L for Australia Post. But she gets on the phone and she explains the situation. I'm sorry, uh, my boy, my my boyfriend and my boss is a fucking moron. That's why that didn't happen. It wasn't so much a theft. It was more just a a, a laziness where you said, "Can you pl- can I please have my money that uh, for the service I provided you?" And my boyfriend said, "I'll do it later every week for 18 months." Uh, it's not really a theft. It's more of a uh, yeah, it's theft, right? Theft by inaction is what I would call it. I wouldn't call it theft. I would call it theft by inaction, which sounds a lot nicer. Anyway, the guy from Australia Post goes, cool. Well, seeing as you have stolen $700 from us before, what we're going to need you to do is give us a deposit uh, so that once you start using our services, we have money from you to ensure that you don't run away. Fair enough. Again, Right, we're not even at where the part where I hate Australia Post. We're not even there yet. Fair, all right. If I rob you and then I come back eighteen months later and go, "Hey, can we still do business?" You got to need a little bit of insurance, seeing as I've robbed you in the past and still are not giving you back that seven hundred dollars. An insurance, little bit of insurance is nice. So they go, "We need you to give us two thousand dollars, which is a lot of money as insurance." So that if you start sending out shit, we know we're going to get paid because the last thing we need is you signing up using $100,000 worth of shipping credit and then forgetting to pay that invoice for another 18 months. Fair enough. Well played, Australia Post. We send them the money, right? Which is a blow because we're in a pandemic and business is hurting. But that's okay because I want to get my shirts to you cunts on time, right? We send them $2,000. We then try to set up the account. It doesn't work. We go, whatever. Australia Post are terrible. We'll wait a couple of days. We wait a couple of days. It's still not working. Jasmine gives them a call. Uh, Sorry, they call us and they go, hey, where's the money? We say, we send it to you. They say, there's no money there. I say, well, fucking look for it because I can see that I've sent you $2,000. So it's there. Go find it. Not my problem. They search, they search, they can't find it. Eventually, two weeks after that, they go, hey man, you're trying to scam us again. We're closing your account. I lose my shit. And then I use my polite customer service voice and say, I've given you $2,000. Find it. Find it now. Fuck you. Everyone using that silence remover? Fuck you. Right? So then they go, oh, we found it. I go, I told you so. Now can I do business with you? They go, no, because we closed your account for a second time. Again, for fraud, now we can't do business with you at all unless we do some unless we do some kind of weird thing to open up a weird thing to open up the lines of communication between your account and our account again. And I go, cool, how do you do that? And they go, well, what we need you to do is uh, generate something that causes a transfer of money and prints a receipt. I go, cool, send me an invoice for a dollar. I'll pay it. There you go. And they go, no, no, no. It needs to be the other way around. I said, why? They said, we don't know. I said, cool, close your business then. If you don't know how your business works, shut it down. Defund yourself. Fuck off forever and ever and ever. Not only is this a no no feedback zone, it's a no Australia post zone. Burn your headquarters to the ground if you don't know how it works. Burn it down. Although, if I was to make a hard and fast rule, uh, if you don't know how your business works, burn it down, I would have to light myself on fire because clearly I don't know how to pay an invoice. Anyway, the solution they give me, they go, all right, this will be perfect. What we need you to do is go to an Australia Post branch in person 
buy a pen and then ask for a refund and then email us the receipt of that refund and 30 days from then we can open up lines of communication again between our banks and i said why don't you burn down your building instead because that is the dumbest shit I've ever heard in my fucking life. Oh, sorry, the only way for us to do business is for you to go to Australia Post during the lockdown, buy a pen, and then look at the woman straight after who just served you $2.50 for a pen and say, can I have my money back? I changed my mind. You're a fucking shit business. Burn it down. Can you imagine the poor woman that has to serve me. But to, when I fucking go to Australia Post and I am like the most insane cunt on planet Earth, I go, hello, could I have a pen, please? She says, yes, I buy it. And then I go, oh, actually, can I have a refund? Honestly, I would rather never use Australia Post again. So if you're wondering where your T-shirt is, it's because I have to buy a pen and ask the woman for a refund. Don't worry. Your shirts are, we're just going to pay extra to get it out to you. The reason I use Australia Post is in the rare circumstance where it is cheaper than the other services. Who, by the way, will Australia Post will be like, oh, this costs $9 to send it here. And then the other service will be like, oh, we'll do it for 4 bucks the next day. It's like, cool. Why do you exist? Government-funded semi-private, buying Cartier watches for executives despite doing a terrible job, shithole business, burn yourself to the ground and never come back. And that's where I'm going to leave it, guys. Australia Post sucks. Never use it. And if you get a Sendle bag or a Fastwave bag from me, you've been blessed because they've, they've, they, I see the fucking Sendle and the Fastway guys when they pick it up from my house, if, you know, every time they pick up a T-shirt, an Alpha Energy T-shirt, a poster, whatever the fuck you buy, they pick it up hand one by one and they carry it slowly, step by step to their van where they place it down in a bed of roses, give it a kiss and then come pick up and they do that. And that takes hours and hours and hours. Because I sell heaps of shirts. <laughs> but they still get it to you the next day. And they lay it down on your doorstep and they give it another kiss. A second kiss. And because they do this, because they kiss everything that's sent, they have to COVID test every single driver three times a day. And none of them work at cafes in the airport. Because they're also in the military. <laughs> But if you get an Australia Post bag, it's been stomped on. And there's nothing I can do about that. But just know that it's been stomped. And it's not my fault. That's Australia Post's fault. Because they suck. And apparently, the best solution they can come up with for taking my money is for me to buy a pen. Say, can you imagine some cunt walks in to you, wherever you work and goes, hi, can I buy a pen, please? And they go, yeah. No worries, you have a pen. Here you go, that'll be $2.50. And I go, great. Love a pen. Would you like a bag? Yeah, I'd love a pen. Sure. I'll have a bag. Cool, here's your bag, sir. Great, thank you very much. Uh, would you like a receipt? Yes, I need the receipt. Thank you. Put it in the bag. And I turn around and I go to the door to leave. And then I go, oh, hang on a minute. Could I have a refund? for that pen that you just sold me? And she'll go, uh, a, I'm sorry, sir, a refund? I said, yeah, I would like a refund. Said, Didn't you just buy it? I said, yeah, I bought it. She goes, well, what's, what's the reason? Like, is it a bad pen? Did it break? I didn't see you use it. I said, oh, I just feel like a refund. She goes, well, I'm sorry, sir, but you can't just buy something and ask for a refund for no reason. There are laws around this. If you've bought something, you need to have a reason to return it. Also, we're in a pandemic. I don't really want to take your pen back. And I say, well, I came in here specifically. I came out of my way an hour 
to come to this post office to buy a pen and get a refund. I said, sir, I don't know why the fuck you would do that, but this is not the place to buy and immediately refund pens. And I will then look at her and say, okay, I appreciate you. You do great work. Thank you very much. Come with me out of the post office. And she'll say, why? Uh, And I will look at her and say, I think you should leave the post office. And she'll say, why? And then I will pull out a giant canister full of gasoline and start pouring it everywhere and burn it to the ground. I'm Lewis Spears. That's Spearhead Sundays. Thank you very much. Support me on Patreon and you get more of the podcast. I'm ending it here. It continues on Patreon. It's up now. Thank you. Goodbye. Have a shit one. I'll talk to you next Sunday.